Has the thermostat in your BMW gone bad? When it does happen, they usually get stuck open causing the engine to run cold, but sometimes they can get stuck closed causing the engine to overheat to dangerous levels. BMWs are well known for having cooling system issues, so I've gotten into the habit of replacing the thermostat every 50,000 miles along with a lot of the other parts in the cooling system. I have a whole other video about that, and I've cut it down into this video for anyone who only wants to replace the thermostat. I always purchase thermostats that come pre-installed in new housings, and the one I'm installing today came with a new gasket, but the four bolts that secure it should also be replaced, so I purchased them separately. If your car is an automatic with a mechanical fan instead of an electric fan, there are some extra steps that won't be included in this video, but I've put a link in the description to help you with that part, along with links for everything I used in this video. Here are the tools that I used for this job. Torque wrench, socket wrench, socket extension, 13 mm socket, 10 mm socket, electric screwdriver, T25 Torx bit, Phillips number 3 bit, large flathead screwdriver, tiny flathead screwdriver, pliers, and a plastic prying tool. For this job I also needed two wood blocks, rags, safety glasses, a floor jack, two jack stands, a creeper, a light, fluid drain pan, magnetic bowl, plastic bowl, silicone grease, one gallon of BMW coolant, one gallon of distilled water, a new thermostat, and four new bolts to go with it. Before starting this job, make sure the engine is cold and the car is parked on flat ground. The first thing to do is put the front of the car on jack stands and remove the plastic belly pan. Your belly pan might look different, but this one at least can be removed with a Phillips number 3 screwdriver. With that out of the way, lower the car back onto the ground. This part of the air intake is secured with four plastic pins that can be pulled out with a regular pair of pliers. Each pin is made of two pieces, so make sure not to lose any of them. All four of these came out in one piece this time. Squeeze the sides of the intake where it connects to the airbox, and it should pop right out. The airbox is held down with two 10mm bolts. Remove the wiring housing that's connected to a small hook on the back of the airbox. Undo the two clips connecting the MAF sensor and pull the airbox out. Remove this plastic pin from the auxiliary fan with a plastic pry tool, or carefully use a pair of dykes to pry it out. This pin came out in two pieces, so make sure to get both. The other side of the fan is secured with a metal screw that can be removed with a T25 Torx. Squeeze to remove the two electrical connections on the fan. Also disconnect the camshaft position sensor and tuck all of these wires out of the way. The fan should now easily slide out. Pull it straight up. Put your catch pan in place, remove the cap from the expansion tank, and use a tiny flathead screwdriver to lift the clips on the radiator hoses before disconnecting them from the thermostat. I removed the hoses completely to install new ones. Remove the electrical connection from the thermostat by depressing the metal wire and pulling it free.
the thermostat housing is held on with one 13 mm bolt and three 10 mm bolts. With all four bolts removed, the thermostat should easily slide out. Install the new thermostat as shown. The three 10 mm bolts should be torqued to 7.4 foot-pounds, and the 13 mm bolt should be torqued to 16.2 foot-pounds. Plug in the electrical connection and reconnect the hoses. I applied some silicone grease to make installing the hoses easier and to make it easier to remove them next time. Make sure the hoses are fully seated and close the wire clips to lock them in place. Now the fan can slide back into place, but first, take a look at the retaining clips it needs to slide into at the bottom of the radiator. The edge of the fan should slide down between the radiator and the expansion tank like this. Make sure the bottom of the fan is securely in place. Reinstall the plastic pin into the corner of the fan next to the expansion tank. Then reinstall the screw in the opposite corner with a T25 Torx. Reconnect the two electrical connectors on the fan and one on the camshaft sensor. The bottom of the airbox has a finger that has to fit into this hole. Insert the mass airflow housing as you slide the airbox into place and secure the MAF with its two metal clips. Don't forget to reattach the wiring housing to the hook on the back of the airbox. With the airbox fully seated, reinstall its two 10 mm bolts. The front of the air intake should easily snap into the air box. Then secure it down with the four plastic pins. Don't forget to reinstall the belly pan. It's important for fuel economy and protecting the alternator from water and debris. So if yours is damaged or missing, try to find a used one at a junkyard or on eBay like I did. Now it's time to refill the system with coolant. The following is the official procedure from the BMW service manual, and if you don't follow it, you're going to have a bad time. Remove the expansion tank cap and bleed screw. Turn the ignition to on so that the fan works, but do not start the engine. Turn the heater all the way up and the fan to the lowest setting. Slowly pour coolant into the expansion tank until it starts spilling out the bleed screw hole. Keep pouring coolant until bubbles stop coming out of the hole. The coolant level may slowly drop. Repeat this step until the coolant level stops dropping. Replace the bleed screw and check the coolant level in the expansion tank. The float has two marks on the end. The upper mark should float above the fill hole. Replace the expansion tank cap and start the engine.
Let the engine idle until the temperature gauge reads normal. Make sure the engine does not overheat. If it does, shut off the engine and start over from step one. If the temperature stays stable, take the car for a short test drive, but keep your eye on the temperature. Then let the engine cool overnight and check the coolant level again in the morning. Top it off if needed. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe for more of the best DIY videos on the internet. And until next time, just keep throwing money at it. Just keep saying to yourself, endless money pit, endless money pit, endless money pit. Endless money pit.